Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Australian Market Preview for 14 December. My name is Carl Kapalungwa. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets, and it is a pleasure to be with you as we kick off a new week. New week, but uh, same issues that the markets are dealing with. Same old trends as well, as we'll see after we talk about the Think Markets difference, which is substantial. $8 flat rate trades, your own holder identification number, unlimited phone support, no hidden platform or subscription fees for fantastic reasons for you to think markets before your next ASX share trade. And why not make your next 10 ASX share trades on us with this fantastic 10 free trades offer for new traders that get on the website, download the app, open an account before December 31. The agenda for this morning is to have a look at the COVID situation, look for underlying trends there. We'll also look at some underlying trends in the markets with their performance from Friday. Uh, We'll also have a look at some charts and some ASX companies, bring that closer to home and then have a look at at the macroeconomic data. COVID situation still climbing new cases in the US, potentially starting to flatten out there. Hard to see it coming way down with Christmas just around the corner. We know that this blip up here was a result, I think anyway, of the Thanksgiving holiday where Americans uh, who don't so much like to wear masks and don't so much like to, um, you know, respect all of these things we know about COVID, uh, got together, gave each other COVID and then uh, went out and spread it some more. So if we see a repeat of that in over Christmas, we could see cases uh, well into the 200,000s, which is disturbing. European Union cases coming down uh, and you can look at the other ones there. But really what we're looking for here are trends and and hopefully, um, well, look, hey, if the trends continue to get worse, then they may have a more severe impact on the markets. Hopefully trends get better, which will support this thesis by the markets because markets have gone up a lot that things are going to get better before they get worse. So that's the big question mark, isn't it, for markets? Are they going to get better before they get worse or are they going to get worse before they get better? Uh, The S&P A6200, I think it's a little bit of the case of having to get a little bit worse before it gets better. We'll talk about that more when we get to the charts, but it was down 0.6% on Friday. You already know most of this information, so we might just uh, skip on to what happened in Europe and in the US. We saw some small falls on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. The Dow Jones was up slightly, and overall the price action, as we will see when we get to the charts, wasn't too bad. More severe falls in Europe. They closed when the US markets were a little bit lower, so that didn't help them. Uh, In Asia upstairs, we can see there that the Shanghai Composite down about 0.8% was the worst of them, otherwise falls. We're pretty consistent across markets in the Asian session, including our 0.6% decline. Have a look at some of the base metals prices from a Friday night. They are pulling back a little bit there. I noticed uh, steel and tin managed to escape those losses. Zinc down a more severe 2.73%, but otherwise it was uh, sort of one or thereabouts, copper down 1.4% in New York. Iron ore is up as we speak on the Dalian uh, Commodities Exchange, up about 2 and a bit percent. It was up about 1% in the US dollar price. Uh, gold and silver, a little bit mixed and a little bit flat. Energy complex pulling back in terms of the, uh, the oil-based ones. Natural gas was slightly higher. The Australian dollar relatively flat. US dollar, small bounce. Bond yields coming down very, very slightly. And let's uh, change gears and have a look at some of the technicals for Friday. We'll kick off with the S&P 500. That's the benchmark index in the US. And we've had the second session where it's probed the support zone and closed near the highs. I think um, Friday's session was more impressive than Thursday. Sure, there was a small loss on the session, but, uh, but otherwise it showed us that there is demand in the system around this level here. So... Uh, I'm pretty comfortable to maintain a long side bias on this. Certainly the short term trend remains up. The long term trend remains up. Uh, We're still, for the most part, in higher peaks and higher troughs of cuts. Anything that would suggest that's not going to continue and we we could see, you know, a a quiet, I'm not expecting huge moves, but we could see something like that through the week. The NASDAQ confirming that once again, we saw a probe down into this 12.2 support level and a close higher. So, you know, maybe we'll see something like this, not as crooked as as that, of course, but hopefully something like that through the week, short-term and long-term trends still very strong. 
Okay, have a look at how our, our S&P A6200 SPY futures traded on Friday, and it was a bit of a topsy-turvy session as we initially responded to those early losses in the US. We saw European markets close around the time those losses were in place, but then a reasonable rally towards the end of the session and the SPY responded. Wasn't enough to get it all the way back to its highs or probably not enough also to um, to stave off maybe a small uh, down on the open today. But uh, the, the shape is impressive for me and I think um, that will give us some support today. We closed certainly a lot closer to the highs than the lows and that's a good thing as well. So uh, what could we see today? If we do get a little bit of a lower open, I'd be happy to see a candle like that where we push down and again close near those highs. Anytime we, we come down and close near the highs, it's a sign that there is this latent demand just sort of sitting in the system waiting for lower prices, waiting to buy the dips. And by the end of the day, that early supply from any nerves from overseas tends to wash through the system and, and the demand is what's left behind. I think this area here is important and I think it will continue to support prices going forward. That's a short-term dynamic support zone. And it's good to see also that this long-term uptrend is now in place. Uh, we're still higher peaks and higher troughs. So there's nothing in the chart to suggest we can't go higher. I'm watching this level here at sort of 65.20 to 65.00 as a key support zone and assuming we can get through 67.46, and that's a big assumption because that is now our short-term supply point, uh, we could be looking at 68.97 where there's a little uh, blip from the past there, but then nothing into 71.97 looking a little uh, further afield. Have a look at some of the stocks going X dividend today. Well, there aren't any today, but there are a few this week. So press pause and see if your stock is on then. Uh, broker moves for the last, uh, well, over the weekend, really, and uh, for the last few hours this morning, we've got Citigroup coming out and lowering their Appen price target to 32.60. So a big drop on its profit downgrade last week from $45. Jefferies lowering, lowering their horizon price target from 560 to 556. Not much to talk about there. Value engine downgrading Immutep from buy to hold. Uh, that um, stock has had quite a sharp increase in price. Value engine downgrading National Australia Bank from hold to sell. BTIG initiates a buy on Piedmont Lithium. That's that uh, North Carolina-based lithium stock. Well, it's, that's where their mine is. It's, uh, it's listed both here and on the NASDAQ as well. And uh, they've initiated a $40 price target. That's in US dollars on that NASDAQ listing. Baron Bird Bank retains a buy on Resolute Mining. Have a look at some of the data from Friday night. Pretty flat on the producer price index. That's wholesale inflation. It was up 0.1% uh, of a percent. And uh, one point, I'm going to say 1.4 or something, 1.2% for the 12 months off the top of my head. But whatever, whatever it was, it wasn't anywhere near enough to bother the Federal Reserve who wants to see average inflation uh, over 2% for a period of time. It was slightly um, better than expectations. The University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index looked like a massive pop, looked like uh, you know bucking the trend of weaker data for the US economy, but probably not the case considering there was a significantly disproportionate pop in the confidence and uh, enthusiasm about the US economy from Democrats voters. Okay, Republicans were way more subdued, and I'll let you figure out why that might have happened. Most uh, economists not going to read too much into that reading, uh, given it was uh, so close to the US election. Have a look at some of the data coming up today. Well, actually, pretty quiet day today, but uh, just putting on notice for the unemployment data later in the week. And we've got some um, services, uh, flash services and manufacturing PMIs coming out on Wednesday. Having a look to the rest of the world, not a whole lot happening this evening, but the big ones for the week up. Oh, I didn't put it on there, but uh, look, check the weekly think tank, which we'll do at midday, and we'll have a, a, a much more in-depth analysis. of Some of the stocks we discussed in Friday's edition of Think Technical that closed really well on Friday and looking pretty prospective for today. So uh, you can refer to, refer to that recording if you like, because I'm going to go through these very quickly here. Uh, Dares, looking um, quite nice, happy to enter at current levels. And poll, waiting for the screen to catch up. It took a while, didn't it? Uh, looking um, very strong short-term trend, long-term trend, looking about establishing what I think will be a stronger energy sector this week. 
I would, uh, if you're a bit more conservative, wait for the break of 31, 43, otherwise happy to go at current levels. Next one, Afterpay, uh, powering the technology sector at the moment. I think that still looks very good. We've had many buyers on this for the last few months and happy to continue to hold. If you've got it, I'm happy to buy if you don't. Have a look at Biz Alloy Steel Group. Uh, that looks fantastic. It's one of the better charts, I think, actually, in this group. I'm happy to go at current levels. Obviously, if you're a bit more conservative, wait for the break of 154. Great short-term and long-term uptrends. Computer chair, more of an, uh, an establishing trend rather than an established trend like Biz Alloy. So we're looking for a break of 1460 here, and I think that's the sensible way to play it. Uh, this is Centaurus Metals. So they have a nickel play and a couple of iron ore prospects as well. So, hey, you've got nickel and iron ore, you're probably going to do pretty well in this environment, but that's a very nice te technical picture as well. Happy to go at current levels. Uh, New Hope Corporation, uh, coal stocks are coming up on my radar again. I think we're going to break through this long-term resistance zone. It is an early one, so there's higher risks involved, but I think there's a very strong case to, to look at coal this week. I'm happy to go on that one at current levels. Nickel mines, an established trend. So we can compare New Hope Corporation going back one. You can see Clearly, this is an establishing uh, uptrend. It's only just begun. Compare that to the established trend of nickel mines. So we're looking at difference, the difference in risk dynamics here. However, we can often find that these establishing trends, um, they can gain quite rapidly as they catch up to you know, where the rest of the market is. But uh, look, notwithstanding both Technical buyers for me at this stage, uh, Nickel Mines looks fantastic. We've covered it many times and happy to stick with it or buy here. Uh, Seven West Media, also stock we've, uh, we've covered many times, is more of an established trend. Happy to stick with it or buy it at the current levels. Uh, Venture Minerals, this is a new one. We covered it for the first time on Friday. I'm happy to go at the current levels. If you're a bit more conservative, go at 4.7 cents. It is a smaller stock. It's more speculative. Don't put your super, whole super fund on it. That'd be silly. Uh, Whitehaven Coal, in that coal-themed space. I'm happy to go on that current levels if you're a bit more conservative on a break of 176. Woodside, so good to see um, Woodside showing some potentially renewed leadership here of the sector. Happy to go at current levels if you're a bit more conservative, 23.72. And a couple of stocks that weren't on the list on Friday, but they're close so well I thought they needed to be in there. Mincor is one that we've covered in the past, and I think at about 75 cents, it's doing quite well. If you're on, on it from that call, hang with it. If you're not on it, I still think you can buy it up here. Uh, and a new entrant to the list, we haven't covered this in uh, Think Technical before, New Century Resources, so uh, they're a base metals uh, producer, um, looking for an establishing trend here. Clearly, it's more of a turnaround play and therefore there are higher risks. It's a smaller stock as well. But I do think given that it has pushed above its long-term downtrend, it has consolidated and held that area well uh, with this short-term uptrend supporting as well. If we break through 24.5, then I think uh, we can go higher here and potentially even to that 40 cent level. So a new buy alert on new century resources. Okay, you can catch uh, that Think Tank and all of our other market news items in the market news section of the website. If you like, you can follow me or the Think Markets handles there on Twitter. In terms of upcoming events, well, we've already talked about our weekly Think Tank that's coming up at 12 p.m. today. Nice segue there. And we will have some Think Learning sessions early in 2021. The disclaimer before I leave you says that everything we've discussed today is general in nature. Look, we are an Australian regulated broker. We do have some products that could see you lose more than your deposit, so make sure you understand this disclaimer very carefully. Or, hey, give us a call, ask us about it, or consult the website for further detail. It has been a pleasure chatting with you this morning about the markets. All the best for your trading. Until we catch up again, bye-bye for now.